What's going on guys, my name is Caleb and welcome to Rainfall Reviews First Top 10. So uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, I mean the ability to speak Japanese is uh, is pretty much the greatest thing. I mean like, I get to communicate in a meaningful way with people who don't speak English. I get to live comfortably in a foreign land. I get to experience a deep understanding of a culture most people perceive to be either just weird or perverted. Now to be fair, the, uh, the refrigerated panty vending machines are not particularly helping the situation, but that's totally besides the point. And on top of that, I get to experience firsthand all the games that Japan doesn't see fit to release to the West. And uh, while that's all nice and well and good for me, I can't help but feel like some semblance of a uh, uh, guilt? Guilt, I think it is? Ooh, it's getting a, getting a little warm in here, I don't know. Oh. And for that reason, today I bring to you my top 10 games that need to be localized for the PlayStation Vita. Sidebar, this list is my own personal opinions and views. It is just as valid as yours. So if you don't like mine, leave yours down in the comments. We'll read it, it'll be a discussion, we'll have a good time. We good? We're good, all right, let's go. Roughly translating to, uh, over my dead fucking body too. It's a JRPG taking place in ancient Japan that puts you in control of a clan suffering from a pair of nasty curses. The first of which prevents anyone in the bloodline from having children. I guess that's not so bad. I mean, there are worse things than being sterile. I mean, there's always adoption or finding a daughter encased in bamboo along with a small fortune. Certainly save a lot of money on condoms. The second being that anyone in the bloodline can't live longer than two years. Okay, that one, uh, that's a bit of an issue. Luckily, the gods take pity on you and offer their assistance in a variety of ways through your journey. Well, they can't help you with the two-year lifespan, they can, however, lend a hand by getting directly involved with the baby-making end of things. Any game where you get to lay a god down by the fire and administer your own personal brand of baby batter gets a gold star in my book, man. I haven't seen any of that action since Virgin Mary Simulator 2011. Your quest begins and you spend the next two years trying to break the curse that plagues your clan. But you quickly realize that two years is not nearly enough time to get shit done. Thus begins the cycle of questing, dungeon crawling, trying to solve the mystery of your clan's curse, plowing deities to make new clan members to take your place after you die, laying down for the long nap, and doing it all over again. And you thought Fire Emblem had punishing permadeath. Some kitty shit. Final Fantasy Type Zero. Okay, hold on, hold on. Th this one's a bit of a stretch, but just bear with me for a moment, okay? All right. We already have the HD remake coming out soon, or it's already out, depending on when I get this thing uploaded, but it's only landing on the PS4 and Xbox. And while that's all well and good, I don't understand why we aren't getting a Vita port. I mean, the original PSP game clearly had mobile play in mind. And additionally, how many HD remasters have gotten a simultaneous console and Vita release? Answer? A single PlayStation 2's worth. All things considered, I'm really not clear on why this isn't already a thing. So, I will make a deal with you, Sony. You bring Type-0 HD to the Vita, and we'll go ahead and sweep that whole uh, sensitive employee information leak under the rug. Yeah? I'm sorry, what was that? The leaked personal emails and sensitive employee information of thousands of Sony employees is already old news? Damn it, there goes my leverage. Alright, number 8 is one that a lot of you guys are really excited about. It's an action RPG where you play as your own custom 16 to 17 year old, fit, attractive, androgynous hero who wields a weapon so unreasonably massive they have no earthly excuse for being able to lift it, much less swing it around like it was a pool noodle, who's pitted against a host of overly designed yet ultimately pretty badass looking monsters in an effort to save the world as they know it. Yes, of course, I have just described every J action RPG ever. All of them. By the way, it's God Eater too. But all of them! What makes this one so special? The main character, Sword Hilt, is the engine of a 1967 Pontiac Tempest, so, uh, you know, that's kind of cool. Also, I'm not looking to get a brick through my window, so, uh, it's on the list. Persona 4 Dance All Night. So, let me give you some perspective. In Japan, Persona 4 is less of a fondly remembered PlayStation 2 game and more of a cut dang cultural phenomenon. 
Not only is the story so beloved that it warranted its own anime, a Vita remaster with additional content, along with a few spin-off fighting games, but there is, I shit you not, a Persona 4 stage play complete with fight scenes and everything. No, 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 don't, don't take my word for this, no. Take my hand and enjoy this with me, please. よし。I'm I'm sorry, where was I going with this? God, now I want to just play some P4. Got the battle theme stuck in my head. Shit. God, that's right. Now we've got a Persona 4 rhythm game coming out. As much as I hate obvious cash grabs, I can't pretend like I don't want this game more than shady dating websites wanting you to believe that these are the lonely singles just waiting to meet you. But alas, you have successfully grabbed my cash, so uh, thank you? Go die in a fire? Tales of Innocence R. Honestly, I was pretty underwhelmed by this game. Like, I've started it and gotten through the opening hours, but it just doesn't have it. You know, that spark, the hook that keeps you coming back hour after hour. It just feels like another unremarkable fantasy JRPG that blends in with others of its ilk, culminating together to make an indistinguishable smudge of games all longing to be different in the same way. These are the games you played once, but strained to call their names, their characters, and the sense of purpose failed to be instilled within you their weeping child in an orphanage, the shouts of an angry man in a sea of angry men, anyone still uploading slender let's plays. So much of the same that you can't distinguish one from the next. Now you say to me, Caleb, that's quite poetic and all, but if that's the case, then would you kindly explain why the hell it's on the list? Well, it is here because of two words, Tales of. If the title is lacking even one of these, I dare say that not a soul in the West, aside from indie make hipster face would even know this game existed. Why should it be localized? One, because this franchise has a following the size of a large polygamous compound. And two, just because I didn't enjoy it doesn't mean it's not worth playing. Haha, but the joke's on you, shit put me to sleep. Sword Art Online, The Last Song. So I owe a lot of my channel's success to Sword Art Online. Reviewing the Vita's first SAO game, Hollow Fragment. If you haven't already seen it, here's the link, check it out! While not perfect, sported entertaining gameplay, and the work put into making the fictional MMO feel authentic was praiseworthy for sure. All of this has left me excited for potential improvements in the series' next installment. This time, we leave the world of SAO, you know, except for the title, for a new MMO called Elfheim, where everyone plays as a bunch of fairies. Sadly, it reminds me of when I was Tinkerbell for Halloween one year. Not even joking you right now. The gameplay looks Pretty similar to Hollow Fragment, save the additional flight, which looks like a plus to me. I'm excited to see what direction the story goes in, beings we have NEVER visited this story arc in the anime, I can only guess what uh, we have in store. Now, for example, it'd be really super cool if we didn't reduce a strong, interesting female lead to a damsel in distress who spends half the game getting molested in tentacle f***ed. Unrelated? Tentacle grape soda. Also, now, I'm just going off the top of my head here, but... What if there wasn't a scene where Sugaha saturates her panties with gojuice while fantasizing about Kirito, who as far as she and the audience knows is her older brother, and then ending the scene right before she lets her fingers do the walking all the way to Pound Town? Well, actually... SHUT THE F*** UP, DUNCAN! I DON'T GIVE A SHIT IF THEY'RE ONLY COUSINS! SHE DOESN'T KNOW THAT! IT DOESN'T MAKE IT ANY LESS WEIRD IN THE FIRST PLACE! GOD DAMN I LOVE GAME OF THRONES! 
The first Valkyria Chronicles was a unique take on the RTS genre that was brought to life by a whimsical hand-sketched art style and a tight-knit cast of characters you really got invested in over the course of its robust campaign. Valkyria Chronicles is also notable as it sidestepped the cliché of having a scrawny 17-year-old be your party's main badass and metaphorical tank by making him a literal mother tank. The third entry seems to have corrected the missteps that plagued the second game, the low point in the franchise, for reasons that I will not get into now. 3 does away with the whole academy setting and flat character archetypes and instead runs alongside the same war fought in the original game. The gameplay seems to have gone largely unchanged, save some new special abilities your main three characters receive. One of which being that you finally get a control of Valkyria. Might have been able to do that in second game, but don't know, don't care. But in the meantime, take heart in the fact that there is a game where a young lady made the ill-advised decision to dye her hair sickly pale blue, and due to an unprovoked attack on her homeland, she was unable to visit her hairdresser with any semblance of regularity. And as a result, she is now forced to fight on the front lines to save her homeland, bearing her exposed fluorescent red roots, looking absolutely ridiculous. Can can, can someone get that poor girl out? Come on, come on. It was funny for like two minutes, but then she... Okay, number three is one that a lot of you guys are really excited about. It's an action RPG where you play as your own custom 16 to 17 year old fit, attractive, androgynous. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that joke off right there. Ha 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 ha, Caleb. You can describe Fantasy Star Nova to sound the same as a cubic butt ton of other action RPGs, but I swear to God, I would exchange my left kidney to a Malaysian organ trade syndicate by way of shady hotel room surgery if it meant I got to play this game in English. Unlike the also Japan exclusive Fantasy Star Online 2, Nova is primarily a single player experience. You have the ability to play with up to three of your friends, but you'll largely find yourself doing all your dungeon crawling and looting with an NPC party. If you're into the Fantasy Star universe, then I'm sure you'll find a lot to love here. But as for myself, I don't really find it that exciting. The combat is fine, the overall aesthetic is nice, I just found it gets rather samey after only a few hours. And if that's the case, then why is it so high on the list, you might ask? This is a list of games that I think should be localized, not my personal favorites. Although my personal preference does influence the list, I've gotten a huge number of comments and messages both on Facebook and YouTube asking me to talk about or review this game. It is clear this game is mega important to you guys, so it gets a cozy top spot. In fact, the only game more requested is our number two. So Fighting Climax is coming to the West sometime this summer, but wanna know what? doesn't change the fact that it hasn't been localized yet, so it's on the list. Boom! Oh, I skipped introducing what this game even is. Alright, for those of you who do not know, it's an anime mashup fighting game sporting fast-paced, over-the-top combat with enough prematurely developed 16-year-old girls wearing skirts of questionable lengths that you are shocked when you find out the final boss is not a sexually aggressive tentacle monster. I mean, for God's sake, the word climax is in the title. To say the least, the fact that the logo is not a generously proportioned censored erection subverted my expectations. If you want to hear more, subscribe for my upcoming review. Shameless self-advertising? Perhaps. Is it because I don't want to blow any of my good jokes on a brief segment in the top 10? Bet your ass. Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. So here it is. Aside from some cursory research, I've purposely kept myself in the dark about the ins and outs of this game. I've done this in an attempt to preserve the magic. So yes, at the time of recording I've not played this game and I haven't researched the story, so I do not have a lot to comment on. But is that stopping 13 year old Caleb from having an aneurysm at the thought of mobbing around the digital world with a party consisting of Beelzemon, Justamon, and Sequiamon, partaking in the title's implied mystery solving? <laughs> and no. And no, it is not. Basically, my hope is that this game will get localized so you can all share in my splendor and excitement, and perhaps each time you boot up your Vita, as you begin to load up your save file, you'll, you'll pause. And if only for a moment, you'll think to yourself, man, that annoying blonde kid was really looking out for me. Damn, his girlfriend was a kitty. What, what was her name? Akuma? Akira? God, I, I can't remember. I wonder when I'm going to meet someone special. Mom called the other day and asked how me and Rachel were doing. Haven't had the heart to tell her we broke up weeks ago. I mean, she left me, but honestly, on some level, I think I was relieved. We never really seemed to click as a couple. 
Sure, we have lots of the same interests, cooking, old movies and stuff, but is that enough to build a life on? Our relationship degraded into nothing more than disinterested conversations about work before streaming hours of Netflix. Two strangers sitting there together as we watched the time pass, like sand slipping through our fingers, helplessly waiting for the end to icy embrace one Netflix exclusive series at a time. Hope oh, games are yeah, Digimon, Digital Monsters, Digimon, oh, what the f*** you? Alright guys, thanks for checking out my first ever top 10. If you enjoyed it, feel free to give it a like, subscribe if you want to be updated as soon as I get the 3DS list up, as well as my normal Japanese game reviews. Speaking of, if this is the first video of mine you've ever seen, I do Japanese game reviews. Go ahead and check out the reviews I already have up, like J-Star's Victory Versus and SAO Hollow Fragment. And stay tuned for my Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax review as well. Also, go ahead and check out my Facebook and Twitter if you're into the social media thing. Alright, that's enough self-promotion for one video. Thanks again for watching, and in the meantime, I guess we're done here.